Well, I think this was a, a tremendous day. And in the interest of time, I'm not going to take too much time. I, um, uh, I think the theme of this uh, meeting was really about collaboration. Uh, it shows that both the scientific community needs to collaborate with all of us, the basic science community, medical product developers need to also collaborate uh, with both the scientific community and the rest. Uh, the regulators are in there and we're kind of some of the fabric that are connective tissue that holds all this together. Um, the healthcare community, um, which was just talked about in the last panel, uh, the connections that are needed there to really bring health to, to the public. Um, the international uh, communities of both science and healthcare and regulation and so forth uh, are very important that we all work together. And this is this is a daunting task with so many uh, so many participants that we need to work together. In addition, we also just talked about the payers and the insurers and the healthcare systems in other countries and their need for evidence. Uh, scientific and clinical evidence and their need for, um, you know, solid uh, ongoing evidence generation. And then, of course, all of this, uh, to, to go back to the beginning of this meeting, is on behalf of the patients. And if we don't um, include a diverse and representative, both uh, clinical trial infrastructure, as well as patient communities, uh, we fail, uh, and we and if we cannot then deliver these interventions to everyone who needs them, we also have not completely succeeded in improving health. So I think this really showed the whole uh, virtuous cycle and the entire uh, circle of folks who need to be involved to uh, bring really the uh, advances of science to the health of people all around the world. So thank you very much, Laura. Well, thank you, Janet. And um, we just want to thank you so much for your participation, your long-standing, strong support of CIRCE. I think uh, uh, just to try and get the academics to get a little more respect from Rob here, we, we uh, uh, we, we actually here really do support the importance of regulatory science and are working hard with our FDA <laughs> colleagues. Oh, thank you. And, uh, um, and that's about the way we conduct trials, um, thinking about new endpoints, early endpoints, surrogate endpoints, that's actually how we can accelerate knowledge turns, integrating efficacy and toxici toxicity, that actually is what patients really care about. Mm -hmm. integrating care and research. There was a lot of talk about real world evidence and everyone talking about how it's time we're gonna make this happen. Well, let's stop talking about it and make it happen and streamline the way we do trials. I think Rob, you wrote a paper about that sometime in the 1990s, but uh, we'll uh, follow up on that and make that happen. It's time to simplify trials and make sure that these trials are accessible to all Americans. And we learned actually about how we can Decreased toxicity, financial toxicity in the manufacturing process. Again, these are ways in which we can work with our regulatory science colleagues. And these issues are so critical um, if we want to improve cycle times for learning and improve the health of the American public. But I want to say that the funding for these activities for CIRCE, for the FDA to do science, is so critical. Um, all of you should advocate for that. I think, I think Anna Eshoo's, you know, call to us, to everyone, write to your Congress people, tell them how important it is to support, you know, science at the FDA, you know, the Clinical Trials Coverage Act, these things, be active in supporting these. Because without it, you know, there's going to be no bandwidth at the FDA to solve problems and innovate. innovate. The ROI is just so big. So, these efforts will make sure that together we can do right by our patients. As Janet said, that's what matters most, and that way we can extend the opportunity to all Americans to be part of trials. And you know, I think we need to take from these panels and make sure that we take action and make things happen on the basis of this, following up on these issues of diversity. And we will follow up on these issues of misinformation. In fact, that will be one of our panels next year. Michael Drake is already 
agreed to be on it. And I think part of countering misinformation, Janet, is having you on the evening news. I'm, I am all over that. Um, <laughs> there's a round of applause for Janet on the evening news. I think you could make it. I think you can make it entertaining. In fact, we can make it into a musical. I, I, I'm sure about that. And, and uh, we're going to show how academia can take the lead on fighting misinformation. I, I'll, I'll stay tuned, Rob. We're, we're, we're going to do it and generating information properly. So uh, that's the way it is. All right. So I want to just show the slide for next year, 2024 Innovations Regulatory Science Summit. Uh, put that on your calendars. Uh, everyone can take out their phone now and, and, and mark that date. And uh, I want to just special thanks to um, Kathy uh, Giacomini and, and Kuldeep Singh and Andy Plump. Um, we worked really hard on putting this conference together, and especially uh, Nathan Dang and Lawrence Lynn and for corralling us and for us helping us to corral all of you. Anyway, and our volunteers, our sponsors, um, to um, the uh, tech people, thank you so much. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next year. And Meeting's not over. Lots of exciting conversations to be had by those posters. Right, Kathy? Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Laura. There. Um, do, is this the end of the virtual session? Because the poster session's only open to the, to the guys here. Okay, so if you're virtual, you can sign off. But um, I'm going to introduce the poster session together with Tina Morrison. Um, and we have some poster trainee award winners who I will announce um, in a second. So let me begin by first saying that uh, um, the Circe is, first of all, thanking all the panelists all the moderators, the organizers, yet again, for this great day, and for all of you for attending. So I really thank you all. Um, and then uh, to Tina Morrison, who's the director of the Office of Regulatory Science and Innovation. That's the office at the FDA that funds all the CERCES, that supports all of us, that interacts with all the different CERCES. So Tina is going to help me sort of end this or begin the poster session. I think I say one more. Can, Tina, can you advance the slide one more? I, I can't. This is a different one. There. So we've got a total of, uh, for, first of all, just once again emphasizing that the heart and soul of CERCI is collaborative research with FDA. So we have a total of 33 posters. There are um, 31 of them come from our CERCIs. And as I said, every one of the CERCIs is represented. A lot of trainees are there. They're presenting very innovative scientific research related to regulatory science. Laura Esserman's group has, I think, eight different posters there. So she might be the Grand Slam winner. Um, there's a lot of examples that I want to highlight. Uh, 22 posters from trainees. And I'm just showing you here some different titles that you'll see. We're doing developing a framework for post-marketing um, evaluation of smartwatch notifications, metals in electronic cigarettes, tracking metal aerosolization, which sounds interesting, combining efficacy, efficacy and toxicity using patient reported outcomes in a breast cancer clinical trial. So those are some of the topics. And I'm going to turn it over to Tina to briefly describe the um, Office of uh, Research and Regulatory Sciences and Innovation. Yeah, hi, good afternoon, everyone. So delighted to be here with you. What an outstanding day. The Office of the Chief Scientist is really um, excited to support the CERCES in addition to a myriad of other activities that we do in terms of providing leadership on regulatory science across the agency, focusing on cross-cutting topics, many of which you all heard today. Um, we're very excited to support the CERCE effort. The CERCE effort is one of the programs that we lead in the Office of Regulatory Science and Innovation, along with cross-agency working groups, um, which we are connecting with our CERCE institutions. We run the intramural grants program. We run the research uh, and development contracts, which just closed a couple weeks ago. Um, more than 200 um, white papers coming our way. And we're very excited for all of the important work that's happening um, with the CERCEs. Um, I encourage you all to take a look at um, our website on the outcomes of interest for the CERCI projects. Um, we've created um, 
a framework that's really focused on defining the important goals for regulatory science and thinking about different metrics for um, getting us to the place where we can utilize that outco those outcomes for informing regulatory decision making. And many of the posters that you'll hear about today highlight uh, many of those um, outcomes of interest. And lastly, before I hand it back, um, to Kathy, I do just want to give out a shout out to the Cersei team in Orsi who works very diligently to support not just the four institutions, but more than 100 regulatory science projects, more than $15 million of research funds from FDA this last fiscal year. So again, congratulations to Kathy for, for an awesome meeting. Um, and I look forward to Early connecting morning. with many of you in the future. Thank you, Tina. Okay, great. Now it's time to announce the trainee award winners. So we have three award winners, Alicia Sotomayor Gonzalez. She's a postdoctor fellow here working on HIV genomic surveillance from populations in Cameroon. She's looking for mutations that may arise in HIV over there, which may affect the entire world. Um, the second of one, and this is not in any order, these are just three award winners, is Brenda Miao, a bioinformatics PhD student working on digital health and natural language processing for digital health. And finally, Michelle Wang, a, a pharmaceutical sciences student working on real world data uh, to monitor outcomes of CAR T cell therapy, and that's using the University of California Clinical Data Warehouse. So we should give them all a big hand. You should go by and see their posters. And then um, next slide is the honorable mention, so I'll just read the names. So Harry Sun, um, Alejandro Botello, Kevin Jung. Marianne Mukal and Andrew Rosselli are honorable mentions, and they have posters there on all different uh, topics. So congratulations to everyone. And again, I'd like to thank by acknowledging once again, um, and also our sponsors here who make it possible. And finally, the last slide, the FDA for doing everything they do for all of us. So thank you. <laughs> posters. Poster session, and I believe wine and cheese and everything is downstairs. So.